So the Euros is just upon us, about a week away, and so I thought we'd sit down and have a chat and give my prediction on who will be the winner and how they will get there, the route, who will finish second, who will make it out of the groups, and so on and so forth. Now, I know what you're thinking. Oh, it's not a group video. Uh, yeah, basic schedules couldn't quite work out for this one, unfortunately. Uh, but next week, don't worry, Patrick, Henry, all the boys will be back. We'll be back in a row chatting about football. And that also might be the, be the Euros. But that'll be next week. This week, you've got myself a double video of me. I hope you guys enjoy it. So in front of me, I've got a fantastic predictor. Just type in Euro 2024 predictor. Uh, it'll come up. Um, and you can basically select how you think the groups are going to work out. I think there's another one of which you can put the scores in. Um, but I thought that might take a little bit too long. Um and at least this way, we can get through it at a good rate and talk about each side uh, and who will kind of top each group, come second, and even the third place ranking, which is important, of course, about how this is going to work. And I think overall, when you look at the squads going into this Euros, there are some standouts. Germany have a super talented attack. We'll get onto them in a bit. Um, even the likes of, yeah, Hungary and Switzerland are like fun. We're going to also, at the end of it, talk about which player I think will do the best. Top goal scorer, best young player, uh, underdog, and maybe also underachiever as well. And so without further ado, let's kick things off with Group A. Okay, so Group A has some interesting teams in there. Germany, Scotland, Hungary, and of course, Switzerland. Um, now, I think obviously Germany are the favourites going into this, into this group to top it. Obviously, they are also uh, hosting the tournament as well. I think that does play a massive part, um, being able to have just kind of full stadiums that you are used to, a place where you are used to, um, and it doesn't feel like you're, you're travelling uh, like others. Put it this way, it doesn't make the biggest deal in the world because it is an international tournament, but I do think it does help. I think you can see England at the last Euros, how much it helped them playing in England and Wembley specifically. Scotland have uh, an interesting group as well. Obviously, I think it's their like second year to have made it into the Euros before. They've got some fun players, like their midfield, I think is good, but I think they lack a little bit depth wise. Strike is a slight issue, um, centre backs are a slight issue, goalkeepers are a slight issue. So I think that could be a problem. Uh, Hungary is also, I think, a slight issue as well, and how that's going to work out for um, for them defensively. Attacking wise, they play beautiful attacking football. Uh, Sabozlai, a key player for that as well. I think when you look at international football, and especially international tournaments, defence seems to be normally what wins you these competitions. Yes, in one-off games, the attack can really help you out when you have star players like Mbappe, Sabozlai, whatever it might be, can be really, really important. But overall, throughout the entire tournament, a solid defence is the key thing here. And that's where I think certain teams may fall short a little bit. Number one is going to be Germany. I think Germany, it, it feels silly not to. It would be very German, I think, for the way things have gone recently for them internationally to finish second in their group or to, to maybe even go out of it. But I think it would be wrong of me or it would feel very wrong if I didn't put them first. I'm going to put Switzerland second. Um, again, I think they've just got a good, solid squad. Um, we'll talk about a bit of the underdogs later on, but I think they could be up there. And Hungary are my third choice. I'm sorry, Scotland fans. I just don't think there's enough star quality power unless McTominay is going to be scoring header after header after header um, to kind of get you guys over the line. And unfortunately, it's not enough. Okay, group Group B, I think, is a really interesting one. Uh, it kind of feels more so like the group of death here. Um, somebody isn't going to quite make it. Spain, obviously, great history internationally. Uh, Croatia have been kind of the underdogs for the last, what, like, feels like at least eight, uh, four um, international tournaments, World Cup and Euros. Um, Italy won the last Euros and Albania. I, I'm going to be honest, I think Albania is probably fourth. I think the other three squads have just way too much quality overall. Um, and I don't think they'll make it into that third place ranking uh, territory. I feel like a lot of people normally every year kind of say, oh, this is it for Croatia. The last World Cup was so good uh, for them in Qatar. Can they really go all the way this time? It wouldn't shock me if they did. It really wouldn't. I think I would put Spain first. I think they've got a really good squad, uh, young squad as well. Um, there's some huge talents. Lamin Yamal ridiculous talent. Nico Williams coming off a really fantastic year as well. So some really impressive players there. Um, I think they will go quite far. Um, I think Croatia will finish second. 
I'm just going to kind of not put them as the underdog for once. And maybe that screws me over um, ultimately. And they do end up finishing third or even fourth possibly. But I think they're going to go second. Italy, I slightly worry um, for them going into this. He says after them winning the last competition. But I know Skamak has had a good year up top. And I know obviously Chiesa when he's on, it's fantastic. But their recent fixtures, which I think you kind of have to go off of as well. Obviously the, chain, the squad changes. Um, but... You know, beating Ecuador 2 0 isn't the craziest result. Uh, just about beating uh, um, Venezuela 2 uh, 1. Ukraine, they drew two in qualifying. To be fair, they'd already kind of gone through at that point. So it, it makes then maybe not as focused on it, of course. Um, even when they played England as well during the, qualif uh, the qualifying, they didn't necessarily threaten us too much. It was a 3 1 win to England. That was at Wembley, of course. So yeah, I'm going to put them uh, in third. I do think they'll probably be one of the stronger third team, place, uh, third team ranking places. Um, but for right now, that is my Group B. Group C. This is where the three lines come to party. Um, I, I'm going to try and not be biased and try and not be like, oh, it's coming home, whatever. Um, I do believe England have a really strong chance. I do think they will go far. I think it would be a failure if they didn't, to be quite honest. I think they've got a nice group um, as well. Uh, and they should be topping that group, to be, to be quite frank. Like Serbia, like solid. Denmark, solid. Again, they were one of the kind of underdogs last season, uh, last Euros. Slovenia, fine. Like, Sesko's a, a, a huge talent, and I think this is somewhere where we'll see him come to light. Um, but Denmark, I've Rasmus Hoyland, uh, and if Eric, if Ericsson is on top form, then I think they're going to be really solid there too. England go top. They do. Um, I think anything less than top would be really concerning. They... They have one of the better teams in this competition um, and should be finishing top of their group overall. Denmark are my second place. Um, Serbia would be my third third team and Slovakia, Slovenia, sorry, apologies. Slovenia, um, fourth. I think Serbia overall just have some good quality in their side. I think their goalkeepers, they're okay with. You've got Petrovic, who had a good year with Chelsea. Um, you've got Milinkovic Savic, who's been okay in Serie A. Centre-backs and defenders are slightly a bit more worrying. They've got Milinkovic, who I think has been spoken about for the last few years now from Fiorentina, um, that he would get the big move, but hasn't quite happened for him yet. But in the Euros competition, he could really stand out. But ultimately, their attack is where things can really get them firing. Blahovic at Juventus, um, Lukijovic of Milan fame, but also... Mitrovic, who, um, when he's on it, is unstoppable. Um, and if he's on it for them in this group, I think it's probably going to be more than, say, Slo Slovenia have. Um, and so they'll be finishing in that third place. Group D, and very quickly, France... We'll talk about them, I'm sure, in time properly, but they're going to be finished up. They just are. Um, they're a freak. They are just continually, continuously creating players and their depth in every position is really, really impressive. Um, so yeah, they'll be finishing top of the group. It feels like I should be putting Netherlands second. Like the squad, I like the squad. Um, I think they've got a lot of fun players to be watching out for. I think Xavi Simmons, hopefully he gets fully integrated into the starting 11 as well. And he's playing for every game because I think he's someone we would all be keeping an eye out for. The defence is pretty strong if it's playing a three-back system. Daily Blin, not so much. But uh, Ake van Dijk featuring in there is really strong. Matthias De Ligt as well, I think is really solid. Dumfries is a, fa a fantastic player. F uh, Vermin, uh, Reinders have also, has also had a good season. Um, so overall, I think they will be finishing second. Um, it feels tough to say that they, they wouldn't be. Um, it would take a monumental effort from Austria or Poland to kind of go on to that way. Like you, you look at him as Lewandowski to have a, a stellar campaign, and he might do. Like it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me. But I think it's going to be Netherlands, um, and then Austria, Poland, Austria, Poland. Like Poland got a couple of players, and Lewandowski if he has, if he has a good time. I think Austria. To be quite honest, it's kind of a toss of a coin between those two, but I'm going to go for Austria for now, and let's move on to Group E. Okay, so I'd love to say that Belgium will destroy this group and go top but sometimes i don't know just i'm not overly impressed by this belgian side i think tedesco is fine but i'm not necessarily uh blown away i think the belgian side as well is just not what it used to be he's not called up thibaut courtois which for me is an outrageous decision to make i think the defense is really poor i think the midfield is is, is good i think any midfield with de bruyne in is always going to be good uh, and the attack is pretty good as well jeremy docu might have a fantastic tournament um, and whilst i am going to put them top i know i said i don't know i am going to put them top it wouldn't shock me if say they don't go as far as everyone may expect them to ukraine did it on the last on the last game 
Slovakia have a good squad. I think Romania will be coming bottom uh, if we're truthful to ourselves. I think Ukraine second. Keeping a close eye on Madrid here. Um, but also, they they do have talented players all over the pitch. You've obviously got the Girona uh, front line um, leading the line as well for the Ukraine. Uh, Skriniar, Lobotka for, for, for Slovakia. Romania. Not necessarily too impressed with who they've got. I think it'll go with Slovakia, Romania fourth. Um, I don't even know if Slovakia get through on the third place rankings, to be honest. Uh, and then the final group, Group F. Portugal to be have a fantastic squad. Like Portugal are probably uh, a favourite for people, to be quite honest. I think they should be going top. Like the the talent they've got there, ridiculous. Turkey, Georgia, Czech Republic. The Czech side's not terrible. It's not too bad at all. Yeah, I mean the Turkish side has Arda Gula from Real Madrid. I know he had an injury this season, but he's still a special talent. Someone I'm, again people will be watching out for. Hakan Chalanoglu is another one. Uh, experience will sit in that midfield. I think they'll come second. I know Georgia have... Georgia have got Kvara. Czechs, Patrick Schick. Obviously, the Czechs have Patrick Schick, Thomas Suchek, um, Kufal as well. Um, but I mean, it, all, it could, all it takes is a bit of like something magical from Kvara. And he could, he could well do that. He really could. Uh, and he goes in above the... Che and they go in above the Czechs. But unless you see it right now, it's hard to make a it's hard to make an opinion. Um, hasn't necessarily had the best of seasons this year. Napoli finishing outside of Europe as well, arguably one of the worst title defenses uh, we've ever seen. Um, so I'm going to put the Czechs in at third, and that rounds off our group stage um, and on to the third place ranking. So for our third place rankings, the way it works is four of the six teams to finish third place progress through to the round of 16. Um, and it's essentially the best third place teams. And it's done on a few things in terms of wins, losses, um, goals scored, goals against, uh, and basically who kind of comes out on top in that side. And for this, what we've got to do is look at our groups and think about how the third place team will do in that group. Um, not necessarily about the quality of the team. Um, and so in this case, who do I think will finish first in the third place ranking? Italy are the biggest name there, but they are in a tough group. So they might not score as many goals. They might concede more um, against, say, Spain or Croatia. And actually, someone like Serbia, who have a good chance of possibly uh, doing well against Denmark, have a good chance of doing possibly well against Slovenia, might end up slightly higher in this table. So looking at the groups, to make it quick, I just think, I think Italy will do it. I think Italy, I think Italy, you know, might scrape third, as in like they could be getting second place, uh, to be quite honest. So I think they'll be okay in that front. Um, I think Hungary's attack will really help them out. Um, I'm expecting Hungary to score a, a lot of goals. I'm worried slightly defensively for them, and say a German side could end up um, putting quite a few past them. But overall, I think Hungary will make it through. Um, I think you're. I worry a little bit about Slovakia. I worry a little bit about Austria. So. I think Serbia make it through and I think the Czechs make it through um, and Austria, Austria and Slovakia do not. Let's move on to the round of 16. Our first game of the round of 16 is Germany versus Denmark. This German side do have a really good potential to make it through to the finals, the semis, the finals. Um, they've got a really nice attack. Uh, a young squad too, especially going forward. Musiala, Wurz are fantastic players. The defence depth is slightly worrying. Left back, I worry about. I think Rudiger and Tarr are a nice combination. Tarr, I think, is a little bit slow and a little bit um, unagile. Not to say he's a bad defender, but I just think that is maybe where you can get at him. Rudiger, on the other hand, is very quick and agile, so maybe that helps out. Denmark, we've spoken about them. Um, I think Germany will end up doing it. Switzerland versus Croatia in our next match, match 38. I actually cannot wait to be watching all these games. I love it when you've got three games on every day um, in the group stage. So, um, okay, match 38. Switzerland, Croatia, Croatia. I'm going to back them. I'm going to back them all the way. Um, Spain versus... Well, maybe not until... <laughs> we'll see how the quarters go. Spain versus Hungary. In a realistic world, it should be Spain doing it there. Um, the squad... The first team squad is good. England will beat the Czechs. Sorry, uh, Czech Republican fans, but I just think it's going to happen um, and they'll go through to the quarters. Portugal versus Serbia. As I mentioned earlier, the Portuguese team is too strong. 
Like, if any of these guys, if if Germany, Spain, Portugal, or England do not make it past the round of 16, it is a failure of a campaign. Um, and it wouldn't, it, you know, it wouldn't, like, when does it ever work out that these tournaments work out perfectly like this? There is a huge chance that they won't make it as far as I'm saying. The Netherlands versus Ukraine. Um, I just, it's going to be the Netherlands. I'm just putting through all the big teams. And I just know this is not going to work out like this. But it's tough to say that, like, Ukraine, who just about scraped through, will end up beating the Netherlands. Again, maybe on the counter. Maybe the, the kind of, like, the, the fullback situation or the wingback situation in the Netherlands might... Especially Blind, basically. Uh, Denzel Dumfries is obviously really good. They've got Jeremy Frimpong there as well. Um, but I, 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 they've just got too much. They've got too much star power. Um, okay, Belgium versus Italy. Italy. Um, yeah, I don't rate the Belgian side. I genuinely don't. In terms, of, I know they've got good players. Uh, Appenda, Doku, De Bruyne, even Lukaku to an extent are the are the stars or the 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 guys to look out for but belgium just on this international stage don't do it and they haven't done and maybe this will be the one that changes it but for now i don't see it happening uh, and france beat turkey uh, that would be one of the biggest upsets we've ever seen if turkey beat france okay quarterfinals some big games here some big games especially the first one germany versus spain portugal versus netherlands italy france england croatia um germany versus spain tough to call Tough to call. Germany have started turning it around recently. They have. I do prefer the German attack to the Spanish attack. And I probably... I think the Spanish midfield beats the German midfield. Like, deep liars. Um, and I think the German defence probably outdoes the Spanish defence. Be a good game. Be a good game. The last time they played against each other, it was 1-1 back in 2022. Germany are going to push it for me. Home, you know, home advantage, semi -fi through to the semi-finals. I can see that happening. Germany beats Spain um, and Florian Wirtz scores the winner. Portugal versus the Netherlands then. I worry slightly. I worry slightly for the Portuguese national team because they've obviously got Roberto Martinez as the manager. But I just look at the squad and I think Diego Costa in goal. Diaz, Pepe, you know, Ing Tao as, you, as the centre-backs. Um... You've got some really strong fullbacks there, or decent enough fullbacks. Not necessarily like bursting forward, but in Cancelo um, can do that as well, and he's he's not had a terrible season. Nuno Mendes at PSG again, not too bad. Um, Bruno Fernandes, he shines, I think, normally uh, on the international stage. I think he's a really good side, and I'd be shocked. It, it would be through mismanagement, I think, um, if they weren't to go far. And so, in my world. They're going through to the semi-finals. Italy versus France. I just, it's tough to see anyone beating France. Maybe we'll see what happens in the next one. But I think France go all the way to the semis at least. It, it's hard to criticise France. The squad is ridiculous. Like, the, the players they've left out are ridiculous. Um, and you, you, what you basically need is on any given day, one or even two of your, like, star best players to turn up and have an absolute ridiculous, like, game of the tournament Um uh, match England versus Croatia, a rematch of the World Cup 2018 semis. Uh, I know it's biased here. I know it's biased to a degree, but England will beat Croatia again. If that if they lose Croatia in the quarters, I think that would be considered a failure for sure, definitely. Semis: Germany versus Portugal. Um, this is a tough one. Mismanagement could be a slight worry, and also like. They weren't that great in the in the World Cup, um, especially in their kind of knockout games. They were fine in the group games, but they weren't... I think Portugal, everyone had high expectations. They did not suffice. Um, whereas Germany, everyone has high expectations, and they've not sufficed so far. Julian Nagelsmann, I think, is a better manager than Roberto Martinez. For that, Germany are going to go through to the final. What's Germany? Go at the groups or something, and it's just an absolute all-time bad call the other semi france versus england we saw france take on england in the world cup this wasn't necessarily changed all too much from then um for england that is obviously added a few players but whether they actually start or not will be interesting i could see this one going either way like legitimately could i think the world cup game kind of had that as well you see a great goal uh from too uh, if that doesn't go in if harry kane kind of scores that penalty it's a completely different game and so I can see this going either way. I think maybe the the 
Mbappe factor might come in here. Um, and so we'll put France through to the final, but hope that my me doing this in the video, England actually win in reality. But we'll see. Give us a month and we'll see what happens. And then finally, the final. Germany versus France. Germany in their country. France trying to win their third Euros. Um, I think the first one since 2000, this would be as well. Germany trying to win their fourth. That, that German defence has a tough time. The German defence has a really tough time um, against that France attack. And I don't know whether I worry too much for the France defence against the Germany attack. Like I know I've praised the Germany attack in terms of Florian Wirtz and Musiala. Um, but will lacking, like like if Kai Havertz is starting up top for them against France, is that really going to be the, the killer factor? I know he's had a good season, but I don't know if that he's quite going to cause that German defence and midfield ridiculous issues. France win again. And they are the winners of the Euros. Funny enough, 24% of other people who have done these um, have also predicted France to, to win the Euros. The second team, England. <laughs> so there you have it. Uh, I, it's not, you know, it's not out there shout. I'm not saying that Georgia are going to win the Euros, so I can understand. But I think it is a sensible shout. I think that whole route is pretty sensible, to be honest. Um, I think your favourites are France, England, Germany, Portugal, probably Spain, if you're making your top five favourites. Um, anyone else adding into that, you'd be a little shocked. Even Italy, I guess, wouldn't necessarily surprise too many people. Uh, we've also got to touch upon uh, the top goal scorer, the young player of the tournament, the player of the tournament, uh, underdog and overachiever. I think um, underdog, if we're looking at this, according to me, is going to be your Croatia again. Um, does that really count for Croatia? Who knows? Uh, I think that's according to how i've done it it's croatia um maybe turkey if you count round of 16 being an underdog story i think underachiever here from how i've done it probably ends up being belgium possibly uh italy if you think quarterfinals is underachieving spain if you think quarterfinals is underachieving that's where i put them um so let me know what you think of them i think your player of the tournament if they're going to make it to the final, he's probably going to be pretty emphatic. He's just moved to Real Madrid. It's going to be Kylian Mbappe. Um, it, it's not It's not too out there. Otherwise, I think it's um, Florian Wirtz. And I think Florian Wirtz is young, your young player of the year. I, I'm, I've got all stocks on this guy. And I know it's not that crazy of a shout because he is very impressive. Um, but I think this might be a one where everyone starts to learn his name if they haven't already, especially your casual fans after watching him play for Germany. Uh, he is a special talent and I think we're going to end up talking a lot about him uh, he'll be my young player of the year um, and I think your top goal scorer will be Harry Kane I think you will I think England have a nice group I think nice but England have a strong group that allows Harry Kane to end up going and scoring a decent amount of goals but there we have it that is my predictions for the Euros for Euro 2024 it starts very very soon uh, next week actually this time next week you'll be able to see it kicking off England play on the Sunday as well um so yeah, let me know on your thoughts on the Euros. Who will go all the way? Who will be the underdog? Who will be the overachiever? Um, who will be the top goal scorer? Play the tournament, young player of the tournament. Let me know in the comments below. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Uh, if you have, then like the video, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. It helps out massively. Uh, it really, really does. It helps me out personally and I cannot appreciate it enough. Um, and as always, I will see you on Tuesday. Have a good one.